Good day, Nakshis. Good day, class. So, we're here again. Uh, together, I'm Miss Hampak again. And together, I'm to, I'm with Mr. Janak Escasinas and Mr. Paular. So, we're going to discuss to you today the literary history of Philippine literature. So, Sir Janak, take it away. Okay, we have four periods in our uh when it comes to the literary history of Philippine literature. So what are those? We have the pre-colonial era, followed by Spanish era, American era, and the last one is Japanese era. So we will discuss this one by one. So let's begin with the pre-colonial era. So this existed before the coming of the Spaniards here in our country. And uh, it started before the Christ up to 1564. And one of its characteristics is it is based on oral tradition. Meaning to say, um, the literature during, those, uh, during that time are, um, what do you call this, uh, handed down from generations to generations orally. So meaning to say it is originated from oral tradition. Okay, and also um, <clears throat> um, during the pre-colonial era, the topic, okay, or the, the main purpose of people is just to survive, okay, in their everyday living. That is why um, it paved the way for their literature to be uh, to focus on just their ideologies and phraseology. And daw po yung ideology and phraseology. When you say ideology, their ideas, what's in their mind, okay? Just like Facebook, what's on your mind, okay? And phraseology, when we say phraseology, it's just their self-expression. What do they want to convey or what do they want to state or convey or what feelings do they want to communicate to people? Yun yung napap nalalagay nila sa kanilang mga literature during the pre-colonial era. So, yes, Sir John Lack. Okay. There are a lot of literary forms during the pre-colonial era. So, we have the proverbs, the naga, folk song, riddles, and for prose narrative, we have epic, myth, fables, and legends. And we're going to discuss that later on one by one. So, moving on, let's have the Spanish period. So, the Spanish period started when Magellan um, actually, what do you call this? When Magellan um, discovered the Philippines. Right? Okay. Um, it started from 1565 to 1898. So, one of the characteristics of Spanish period is that it has two classifications, religious and secular. But before that, the main focus uh, of the Spanish period when it comes to the literary history of the Philippines is that the Christianity right the spreading of christianity that's why a lot of literary um, pieces during this time is more on religious so next is uh introduce spanish as the medium of communication so um they teach uh, they taught as the uh, spanish language and it is used as the medium of communication during that time and a lot of literary pieces were written uh, using the Spanish language, even yung mga Ladinos or yung mga Filipino writers. Ang ginagamit nila is Spanish language, like Dr. Jose Rizal, marunong sila mag uh, salita ng Spanish, and a lot more. Next, um, it planted seeds of nationalism. So, um, when it comes to the national. Uh, Kasi dito, na, uh, nagising na yung mga Pil uh, Pilipino sa mga uh, sa Spanish rule. Yung, uh, sa mga uh, friars, kasi nga medyo ano sila, um, sa tingin nila, uh, what do you call this? 
yung pamumuno kasi ng mga priors before is mahigpit, immorals, and um, hindi na makatarungan para sa mga Filipino. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga revolutionary literature siya sa si mga newspapers. Meron din tayong tinatawag na propaganda literature. And yung mga newspapers, there is actually a um, trinity na pinamumunuan nila Dr. Jose Rizal, ni Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and Graciana Lopez Haina. So sila yung mga writers, sikat na writers na for revolutionary literary pieces. And one of the writings of Dr. Jose Rizal is yung Nolimitangkere and El Filibusterismo. So he wrote the Nolimitangkere to um, expose the bad people in the society while the El Filibusterismo is to expose the uh, bad um, doings of the friars and uh, about the Spanish role in the government as well. Any additional? So yeah, for Spanish yes. period, it's more uh, likely to focus, uh, focused on Christianity and, of course, religion. Okay, so certain. Right. With that said, Miss uh, Hampak, uh, for a while. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. that said, uh, the first book that was published in the Philippines is was written in Spanish language, and it is entitled. Um, Doctrina Christiana. <laughs> Doctrina Christiana. Yeah. But then it was also there's also a translation of English for that book. It it, it is a compilation of prayers. Yes. Yes, Mr. Kim. So maybe you're trying to figure out why is religion the primary front of um Spanish period because they've tried to conquer different islands, different um mainlands. By, um, by the use of religion. And if you would not be submitting yourselves, by, it's according to them, if you would not be submitting to them by the use of religion, the sword will be used to you. Parang, parang ang sabi, pag hindi tumalab sa'yo si Santo Nino, espada ang katapat mo. So, um, they try to conquer the Philippines and paano nga mapapropagate yun? Wala namang TV, wala namang radio na ginagamit for mass media. So, what, what they use is, ayan nga, yung um, tawag dito, yung literature ma para mapakalat. It's either, ayan nga, through, mamaya, i-discuss naman natin yan sa forms. Pero yun yung ginagamit nila to, uh, para mas kumalat, yun yung education na ini-instill, doctrinated, indoctrination yung ginagawa. Pero may kumontra nga yung revolutionary uh, part ng mga Pilipino na nakikita nila kasi based from the I think ang nag-inspire kay Dr. Jose Rizal is yung French Revolution. Nakita na may mali ding mga ginagawa sa ibang bansa at nakita na ginagawa rin dito sa bansa natin. So yun sa akin. Okay, so the literary forms during that time are religious literature such as passion, sinakolo, and for secular literature we have awit and corrido. Okay, moving on is the American period started from 1899 to 1942. So, um, the main focus of the colonization of Americans in our country is, or what do you go, the, um, the main contribution rather of Americans in our literature in, or in our country is the formal education. So, there or when it comes to the public free pub what do you call this public school system free public school system so um kaya ang mga first teachers natin ay ang mga Thomasites or yung mga so American soldiers so sila yung nagturo sa atin ng of course ng basic uh, English and, and so on and so forth. In addition to that, mapapansin nyo na um, bakit tinuruan yung mga Pilipino sapagkat uh, mo mostly nga dito sa Spanish is indoctrination. Ang tinuro is what? Okay, yung what? Ito dapat yung matutunan. However, dito sa American period, nag-focus sila sa how to learn. Ito sa Spanish, what to learn, which is uh, highly theological, highly related to religion. Itong American naman is 
how to learn. Tuturuan namin kayo magbasa, tuturuan namin kayo magsulat, di ba? Tuturuan namin kayong magbilang, basic literacy. And then from that, pwede nyong aralin yung iba't ibang mga bagay. That's why yung main na produce nila is teachers. Gusto nila mag-produce ng teachers that will um, teach also, teach others also how to be teachers. Parang mapasa ng mapasa yung basic literacy. Ganun. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Sir John Lack. Okay, next is it signaled the growth of Philippine literature. So actually, um, as far as I remember, there is one short story. Kasi during the time, uh, during the American period, nag-prevail talaga yung pagsusulat ng short stories kesa poetry. Kasi yung Spanish more on poetry yung pagsusulat nila kasi nga sikat nun that time si Balagtas din. But during this... Um, uh, the American period, mas nag-prevail ang pagsusulat ng uh, short stories. But then, the problem is that uh, instead na may sariling stilo ng pagsusulat ng mga Pilipino, they tend to imitate the Western writers like Edgar Allan Poe, William Shakespeare. So, nagagaya nila yung kind of writing styles or techniques ng mga uh, Western writers. Then, uh, as far as I remember nga, yung sinasabi kong short story na talagang sikat during this time is yung dead star ni Paz Benitez. That's, uh, that short story signaled the growth of um, Philippine literature when it comes to English language. So it is actually, yeah. if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it is actually the first uh, short story written in English during mm -hmm. that period. So, the literary forms are John Lack. Okay, the literary forms are short stories and novels. Moving for the Japanese. Okay, last one is Japanese period started from 1942 to 1960. And the main focus of this or the main contribution of Japanese uh, people to our country is the industrialization. Okay. And but during this time, um, this is a war. Uh, this is the time where in World War II happened, right? So war years yung mga panahon na to, and and so magulo. Actually, yung mga Japanese people or mga military ng Japanese tinipinatigil nila yung um, they what they call this. They prohibited the use of English language when it comes to writing um, literary piece. Mas gusto nila na magsulat yung Pilipino into our own language. And another thing is that yung mga newspaper during that time ay pinapa uh, pinatigil. So unti na lang yung nag uh, unti na lang yung uh, mga lumalabas na newspaper kasi nga ito yung mga panahon na talagang um, Mayroong, it's like parang martial law, something ganun. Yes. Na pinatigil hmm. lahat ng mga, um, yung mga press. So, next is, Tagalog poets broke away from Balagtas tradition. That's why fiction prevailed over poetry. Same thing na nangyari doon sa Ameri American period. And, uh, it's a Japanese period din naglabasan yung mga literary giants. So, mga literary giants, ito yung mga award-winning bodies like National Artists for Literature uh, and the Palanca Awards for Literature. Any additional? So, um, to recap everything, so what are the aims of the literature during the death uh, the certain periods that happened in our Philippine history. For pre-colonial, it's more on survival. For Spanish period, it's more on religion, Christianity. Then for America, it's all about education. And for Japanese, it's all about industrialization. So those are um, the most, uh, what they call this one, used topic the or theme of literature during those certain periods of time. So moving on. Let okay, so. Yes, Sir Jan. 
Okay, we're going to discuss the literary forms for each period or era. So we're going to start with the pre-colonial era. We got Proverbs mm -hmm. and Tanag. Okay, so let's discuss Proverbs per first. So when we say Proverbs, these are wise sayings. Or usually it came from, or ito, uh, ang mga nagsasabi nito is yung mga elders or yung mga parents. So this is a, a actually a wise saying or statement that is considered wise. So, example of this is, bago mo sabihin at gawin makapitong isipin. So, iyan yung mga example natin for Proverbs. So, in English, Miss Hampak. So, it means uh, before you do or you say something, you have to think of it not just twice, thrice, but at least seven times in order to be convinced that it is right and it is just to be said and to be done. Okay, next is kung di uukol, di bubukol. How about that, Ms. Sampat? <laughs> okay, so... Oh um, I can relate to it. The three of yes. us can relate to it. Okay, so okay. kung di uukol, di bubukol, what does it mean? It means if it's not meant to be, it will not be or it will not happen. If it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, then it is not. Just accept the fact that hindi mangyayari ang bagay na yun. Para di ka masakta. <laughs> okay. Okay, moving. Next one is the Tanaga. Tanaga is actually a uh, indigenous Filipino uh, form of poetry. It's like a haiku or tanka. So it, com uh, uh, what do you call this? It is a uh, four-line, four rhymed lines. Meaning to say, lahat ng dulo nagra-rhyme. Get it? And uh, it consists of 28, um, 28 syllables written in seven, 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 seven lines. Mm -hmm. Or syllables. Syllabication. Syllabication. So as you can see, tina mo, uh, bilangin natin ha. Bilangin if, natin um, ang mga magbilang. <laughs> <Kailabot. Aba. laughs> okay, okay, so game, example of this is Kaibigan ni Emilita Perez Baez. So, as I've said a while ago, it consists of 28 syllables written in 777. Okay, let's try. Pa, lay, si, yang, ma, Ay, no. oh, seven, bonga. Next. Lucky seven. Lucky seven. Nang ho mangi yo moko. Oh, so, seven siya and then it's rhyming. Okay. So, that is Tanaga. Let's move. There we got Fox Song okay. and Riddles. Perjana. Okay, folk song, they are the folk lyrics that are usually uh, chanted or these are the lyrics that meant to be sung. So actually, lahat ng, halos lahat ng mga provinces here in our country may kanya-kanyang folk song. Like example, yung sit 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 yung mga manang biday, ating kukong sing-sing. Oh, yeah. So, those are the folk songs. So, usually, we got, uh, actually, we, got, we have folk songs as Filipinos because, one, we're really fond of singing and also, um, during those times, the pre-colonial era, di ba, wala namang media, wala namang Facebook, wala namang scroll na nagaganap. So, uh, people tend to uh, entertain themselves through singing in a group or singing uh, after a group. So, parang mas masaya kung mas marami. So, any additions pa po? Actually, folk songs are uh, talks about the hopes, aspirations, and love sometimes and um, experiences about day to day yes so day to day so, yun yung mga day -day. usually mga topics ng yes. or things ng ating folks so. all right okay moving 
Moving, let's have riddles. So, riddles are actually um, questions with deeper, um, what do you call this, that needs to uh, be answered. Yung mga, ano to, medyo malalim. Gumagamit siya ng mga metaphors and uh, figure, figurative languages. And it's in a form of a game. Good. So, example, sagutin mo naman, Ms. Sampak and Mr. Team. Sige. Okay, ang katanungan. Okay, for you, Ms. Sampak. Single ka ba? Joke. Okay. Isang balong malalim, punong-puno ng patalim. So, what is the answer, Ms. Sampak? Balong malalim, punong-puno ng patalim. Bibig. Bibig. Yes, bibig. <laughs> All right. Bakit? Very Bakit? good. Bakit? Bakit pa nasabi bibig? Because I think and I saw myself <laughs> in the camera and I saw that my, bi- that my bibig is very big <laughs> and it has patalim seems. <laughs> okay. So it's like your nipin is the patalim. Yes. The nipin is the patalim. The balloon is your mouth. All right. How about, okay, sa'yo, Mr. Tim, answer this um, riddle. Dalawa kong kahon, buksan, walang ugong. Ah, hirap. Ba yan? <laughs> dalawa kong kahon. Walang, kali, may, dalo, may alam ako dalawang kahon, pero may ugong yun. Ano yun? <laughs> Box of chocolate. <laughs> Eme. And then, I think, ano yan? Alam ko na ano na natin yung dati. Dalawang kahon mo. Mata! Ah, alright. Very good, Mr. Team. Buksan mo, <laughs> nga ang, buksan mo nga ang iyong mata. Tingnan natin kung walang ugong. Buksan mo nga ang dalawang kahon. Tingnan natin kung walang ugong. Gusto May makita ugong ng kahon. May ugong Mr. Team. <laughs> yung, yung kahon na yung ugong kasi. Okay. okay, very good. So, moving on. Next literary form is epic and myth. So, um, the epic is actually um, a lengthy narrative um, poetry. It's a poem, not a short story. Um, uh, it talks about the adventure of a hero. Right? Example of this is Di Ag Nilam Am by, Ped, by Pedro Bocane. So, yung mga um, epic natin, like say for example, the famous one is yung Beowulf, right? Beowulf. Beowulf is, Beowulf. ano nga, how many, ano yun? Hindi ko na maalala, pero... Thousand. It is, <laughs> it is, is it the longest? Yes, the, it, it is, is the longest, longest, longest epic. epic. Well, Tanda ko, meron din tayong version niya sa Pilipina na um, yung naging TV series sa GMA. Ewan ko natandaan niyo pa yun. Yung kay Marian Rivera. Uh, oh, Amaya. yeah. Yan, Amaya. <laughs> the Amaya. Amaya. Epic din kasi siya sa Amaya. So, so, usually, yung epic, guys, is there's hero and there's a villain. Napakasimple lang naman ang plot. Laging may... Merong um, bida Contra na bida. heroic, parang may superpowers din sila. And then, may villain or set of villains. And sa mga din nakakaalam, hindi siya uh, prose ang pagkakasulat na ito. Under siya ng poetry. Meaning to say, uh, sinulat siya ng uh, linear by lines. Yeah. Nagkikwento but in a form of poetry. Mm, Narrative of, poetry. Um... So one of um, the most um, famous, okay, the most famous um, epics are the Iliad and Odyssey. Iliad for the Trojan Wars, Troy, Achilles, and um, Helen of Troy, and also Odyssey, where Odysseus is set to have his journey, his ten-year journey. So you know. Now you know. Char. Okay. <laughs> Move. Wait lang, di ba sa right. minute? Ah, uh, yeah. Na ba ta- okay, yes. next is myth. 
So, mm-hmm. when we say myth, it talks about the gods and goddesses. And not only gods and goddesses, but it explains the unexplainable. So, yung mga creatures like Sigbin, Manananggal, Tikbalang, Nunusunso, so, o yung mga ganyan. So, that is an example. Those are examples of myth. Filipino myths. Okay? Naalala yes, nyo yung Pedro Penduco? Siyempre, hindi nyo naalala yun kasi time namin yun. <laughs> hindi nyo, hindi pa ata kayo pinapangalala. <laughs> o baka oh, bago pa lang kayo naglalakad. So, yun. Pedro Penduco actually show, uh, showcases or shows uh, different myths in the Philippine um, setting. So, yeah, that's myth. So, uh, explaining the unexplainable. Kapag hindi mo ma-explain kung bakit yun yung sagot mo, isa yung myth. <laughs> okay, guys. Are you familiar sa first picture ng myth? Hindi po. Ikaw, Mr. Team, baka alam mo. Yung? Yung first picture ng sa myth. Um, I think, na pan- ano yun, napanood ko yun sa sa wait lang Encantadia I think sa Encantadia yan yung kumakain ng buwan Encantadia fanatic oh yeah. yes mga amihan amihan na <laughs> tawag parang myth yan eh natatandaan ko sa bandang simula pa lang meron so, sa bandang simula yan na kwento si ano yan letter B help me out nga ba bat haluman hindi hindi bat haluman bakunawa <laughs> Yon, yon, yon. That's right. It's Bakunawa. Uh, uh, Bakunawa. It's Akala ko anong Bakunawa. <laughs> Sabi mo yung parang... Ka <laughs> oh. may ka parang may walong back. buwan dati. Yung, yung, buong, mm-hmm. yung mundo daw, may, buwan, may walong eight. buwan. Mm-hmm. Yes, eight. Para eight moons. And then, si Bakunawa is from... Hindi ko alam from outer space ba siya o galing siya sa dagat. Sa dagat. Sa dagat. Sa dagat. And then, kinain niya, kinakain niya yung mga buwan. And then kapag nagkaka-solar or lunar eclipse yata yon, tina-try niya kainin ulit. Tina-try niya kainin yung nag-iisang buwan. Kaya nagdadasal sila kay Bathaluma. Ganyan kay Bathalumang Eme. <laughs> Alam mo tayong pangalan. So ayan, myth siya kasi tina-try niya lang i-explain yung natural phenomena. Though hindi naman scientific, gumawa na lang sila ng isang monster na kumakain in by their own imagination. All right, next moving. Okay, next is fables and legends. So when we say fables, these are actually stories bounded by um, good morals and manners. So it teaches us uh, morals and right conduct. And it (laughs) usually uses... um, animals as the main characters or sometimes inanimated objects as the main characters um, which represents um, a particular value or characteristics. Like say for example, yung um, what do you call this? Beauty in the Beast. Beauty, <laughs> Beauty in the, in the Beast. <laughs> Right, yung mga candles and ano nagsasalita. So, kung noon, sabi ni teacher, um, fables are those stories that contains animals as characters. Ngayon, okay, fables are also those stories that contains things as characters. Yung mga biglang nagsasalitang lupa, nagsasalitang halaman. Okay, so fables pa rin siya under fables. Sir Tim. Okay, Ah. Baka yung iba kasi ano, sinasabi din ay masyado pang bata naman to eh. Hindi na ako makarelate. Parang ano yun lang yan. Para sa bata lang naman yan. Well, nagka, tama ka sa hinala mo. Pang bata talaga yan. Because most of the, um, most of the children na kahit tayo nung bata pa tayo, ima- sobrang imaginative ng mga utak natin. And kahit yung mga inanimate, yung kahit walang mga buhay na bagay, ay tinatry natin bigyan ng buhay. So itong mga alam naman natin na Um, ito, hindi naman nagsasalita itong mga pagong, yung matching. However, para mag, mag, magkaroon ng moral or talaga ma-instill yung value sa mga bata, uh, yung mga writers, trinay na lagyan ng buhay or dinagyan ng human personalities itong mga hayop or other inanimate objects to give us moral and spiritual value. Ganun-ganun. 
hindi para sa inyo, okay. mga malalaking bata, ang fables. Para sa malilipit. Baka ng kornyahan kasi kayo eh. <laughs> okay, move. Okay, next is legend. Okay, legends are actually the stories which talks about the origin of a thing. Right? Like say for example, yung mga uh, alamat ng pinya, right? The legends are alamat in Tagalog. Mm-hmm. So yun. It, uh, it actually so ini-explain niya kung saan ang galing yung mga bagay-bagay. Correct. Kaya kung gusto mo alam, malaman, ang galing. <laughs> Baka ka panahon na para magsulat ka ng legend about you. <laughs> okay, so alamat siya. Legend of the Blue Sea Char. Ay! Mobile legend, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, legends are okay. alamat. So, it it explains where, okay, uh, where did something came from. Next. So, let's move with... So this We're is under with, uh-uh. under Spanish era. Spanish era na tayo. Yes. We mentioned a while ago that Spanish era has two um forms of literature, the secular and non uh what do you call this? Oh, not secular. So first is we have Pasion. Pasion is a poem or a song. Or it is a poem which meant to be sung. It is actually, um, it tells the suffering and death of Christ. Kaya, tawing Holy Week, naririnig nyo siya, di ba? Kinakanta siya ng, yeah. um, ng mga tao. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, kaya din siya tawag na passion is because it talks about the passion of the Christ the passion, for suffering. Yes. Yes. Then, Sinaculo. Next is Sinaculo. Sinaculo class is actually dramatization of the passion or the passion of Christ, the suffering and death of Christ. So, if yung um, passion is meant to be sung, the, um, the uh, Sinaculo is uh, meant to be performed or act. Yes. And um, it's exclusive, okay? And since na originate siya no, um, Spanish era, Spanish. it is okay, exclusive or it is a Catholic thing, okay? It's a uh, Catholic thing. Uh, mga kato- katoliko yung gumagawa ng ganitong um, practices during um, mahal na araw. Any other pa? Additional po? So, napansin nyo, yan yung literary form ng Spanish period. So, katulad na sinabi ko, wala pa namang mass media back then. So, paano nga ba nila mapapropagate ang Christianity ng creative way naman? So, eto passion, hanggang ngayon napasa pa rin sa atin. Uh, pakanta pa nga siya, di ba, yung passion. It's a form of song. However, eto yung, yung buong passion is, I think, buong kwento ni Cristo to eh. Mula nung... Ano, yung daan niya papuntang Calvary, papuntang Cruz. And then, sa Nakulo naman, may mga actors talaga. So, it's somehow a drama naman, di ba? In some way, drama siya. So, ito yung um, para ma-entertain. Nakik- nakikita to ng mga Pilipino back in those times. Entertainment. Eh, pero hindi nila nakikita. Indoctrination din yung ginagawa sa kanila to convert themselves into Christianity. Ayun. You're actually doing this as penitensya, di ba? If they have so many sins mm-hmm. and they are regretting or they want to, uh, what they call this one? Um, they want to repent from the sins that they have done. They do pan, uh, they do panata or they do penitensya. Kasi tingin nila, um, their sins will be lessened kung gagawin nila yung mga yun. Okay, moving on is Corrido and Awit. So, Corrido and Awit class, there are actually similarities and differences between the two. Uh, there are, first of all, they are both mythical tales or mythical romances of Philippine literature. Okay. So, for the first differences between the two is that 
awit is um, mas kapanipaniwala yung kwento, yung flow ng kwento niya. And yung corridor naman ay medyo hindi ka kapanipaniwala kasi more on fantasy siya. An example of this is Ibong Adarna for for Corrido and for Awit is Florante and Laura. Okay. Another difference sa uh, between sa dalawa na to ay um, yung Awit it has um, it has dodecasyllabic um, syllables or twelve. Syllable. Twelve. Twelve <laughs> syllables. Twelve, <four> lang <laughs> Twelve <laughs> syllables uh, per line. While yung korido naman, it only has um, octosyllabic or eight syllables per line. Yes. Yes. So, so ayun yung differences. So, there. one of the famous korido is our um <clears throat> walang kamatayang ibong adarna nung tayo yung mga grade 7 or seven. first year sa high school di ba kiniplay pa natin yan walang kamatayan <laughs> okay. sa awit naman we got florante at laura kinikilig pa rin ako pag naaalala ko yung play diyan ang pogi nung bida <laughs> Baka sa school niyo yun, be. Depende sa school. Depende sa school. Depende sa school. I will, be, I will highly argue dyan. Di, sa Philippine Stagers Foundation. Ah, I see. Dahi. Hindi ko kaya. Char. Okay. Okay, moving on. Okay. Pag-move ka. Next. Oh. We will play a game. Gege, try natin. Okay, let's Okay, so, it. familiar naman kayo guys sa four picks in one word, right? Yes, sir. Uh, you know the mechanics of the game. Yes, okay. sir. Papakita mo so, yung there word. There are actually picture. four pictures. <laughs> there are actually four pictures. <laughs> Tapos suhulaan nyo kung ano yung right word for that. Okay? Okay. Pwedeng so, pag pinagsama-sama siya para mahulaan mo or pwedeng kitingin ka sa isang isang picture. Okay. okay, let's do this. Okay. Yes, let's have... okay, what do you think would be the word for this? Module. Module. <laughs> Module. Tasty. It has two words, Mr. Team. Tasty the bread. Mod the module. The module. <laughs> the module. Sorry. Uh, reading materials. <laughs> It consists, the first word consists of five letters and the other one, five letters as well. Five letters, five, five. Yes. Mm. Five, 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 tuna. Merong short. Mm -hmm. mm. You're getting there, Charlie. Short poem. <laughs> short poem. Short, short poem. <laughs> short story. Okay, story. let's see if short story is right. Correct answer. Oh my gosh. The correct answer right. is right. Short, story. short story. Not a long story. Short yes, module. Not a long. <laughs> okay, as you notice, there is a bread, right? Yes. Relax na bread. <laughs> <laughs> may butter pa sa ibaba. Okay, pa bakit kaya may bread? Hindi ko po alam. Let's see kung bakit. Alright. Kumakain ng bread habang nagbabas na short story. <laughs> Kasi short story is referred to a slice of life. Why? Because short story, as the name suggests, it is short. And so, it is uh, meant to be read in a single sitting. So, matapos mo agad siya, isang upo. Isang upuan lang. Sa upuan sa isang lang. Siyempre, upuan lang. gagalaw ka kasi nakakangawit oh, oh. yun. <laughs> sa isang upuan or sa isang basahan lang. Unlike yung ibang um, literary piece, it would take days or would take uh, weeks in order to finish one literary piece. So, clarification right. lang. Nandito na tayo sa literary forms of American period. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Moving on. <gasps> Moving on. Ay! Ba -ba! Medyo mabas, 
Okay. Very good, Mr. Team. The, <laughs> the, correct, the correct answer is novel. Long no, June. Novel. So, may, may bread na naman. Pero this time, mahaba yung bread. Oh, mahaba yung bread. Okay? At French Because, na. French bread. <laughs> uh, at nakita nyo, marami nang nagbabasa. Mm-hmm. Right? But may nagsusuklay. Because it's a long hair, char tango. Oh, okay. So, let's see. It is... Okay, let's see. Sige na. Okay. It is novel because... Okay, novel is considered or referred to as loaf of life. So, a while ago, your short story, Slice of Life, kasi nga, short lang siya, uh, kaya siyang basayan sa isang upuan. Well, the novel, it's, um, uh, you can't um, read it in a single sitting because it has um, multiple plots. Maraming plot siya and it's composed of chapters. Okay. So, um, it would take uh, time talaga para matapos mo ang isang novel. Tama. <clears throat> okay, so Slice of Life, short story, Loaf of Life is novel. Let's move. <clears throat> okay, the last one is... So, the... We're gonna highlight this because it's under Japanese era. Mm-hmm. So these are the um, national artists in literature. So we have our first ever national artist for literature, Mr. Jose Garcia Villa. Yeah, yeah. So he's very famous for his um, work, literature work, or literary work entitled Footnotes no to Views. <clears throat> if you have time, um, yes. Basahin niyo it's to. a repet- Yes. Yung technique dyan ni Jose Garcia is repetitive. Kasi paulit. <laughs> paulit lang ang pangyayari. Sure. Parang pananakit kasi paulit-ulit. Pag-basin siya nananakit, pinaulit-ulit. Masasanay na nangit. Uh, Alright. Pero yung mo naman, paulit-ulit din. Okay. So, <clears throat> basa, basahin nyo siya or take time to read these um, literary uh, pieces. Sila okay. dudong. Dudong and blast in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hindi kayo magsisisi na binasa niyo sila. Yes. Moving. So that is it for the literary history of Philippine literature. Philippine literature. So, we're going to be back on the next video. So, bye for now, my friends, my students, my natchis. Bye!